Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On today's episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at a screen sharing program with some security features in it called X2Go, right after this. So again, like we did last, uh, well, like we did the last time, I'm going to be using Proxmox again. And I'm, I have installed Fedora uh, with one of the spins for XFCE. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, set up and get uh, X2Go running so that I can share uh, the screen with uh, uh, my local desktop. So it'd be like acting as if I was running locally off of that, that machine. So I already have it running here. So we'll just go ahead and open the console for it. And we'll go ahead and log in. I haven't done anything to this other than install and update the system. I've also gone ahead and, in, and installed the X2Go server, but I'll show you what you need to do to do that. So um, let's go back over here for just a second. And X2Go has a website. It is open source. I, I mean, I I prefer not to use implementations of the the Microsoft desktop uh, uh, sharing service or any of the, that ilk because of the security concerns that I have with it. I do have Romina installed, and I do use that sometimes as a graphical client for SSH connections, but I do not use it for remote screen access. Instead, I use I use X to go, and so I thought I would show you. And since uh, you guys had asked me to show you some of the things that I use, this is one of the tools I use. And so, there's some instructions here on installing X to go for client and the server both. So we'll bring those up. And yeah, you do need two parts. You need a server component, which is on the box that you want to share the screen from. And then you need a client on the machine that you want to be able to uh, open that particular desktop interface and then interact with it. Uh, it, is, uh, it is based on Qt5 uh, for the client. And then the server is just, it's just uh, I mean, a, a light service that runs in the background. You can do a number of things with that. You, uh, and so the, let's talk about the, the setup first. So the latest version of this is 4.1, and then there's some, some patches that have been applied to it. So if you have a recent distribution, say like Fedora 32 or Ubuntu 20, uh, 2004, then you'll have uh, 4.1 installed. I believe that even 19.10 had 4.1 as well, but you'll need to check your distribution for that. And if you don't, you can always add the PPA in order to be able to get the latest version of it. And I would recommend doing that. Uh, and there's instructions for Debian. You can do it with uh, Raspberry Pis as well, and Gen 2, Fedora, Red Hat, and... Uh, Red Hat, uh, and then also SUSE. So, and Arch, of course, is uh, down below. I might try this with uh, the Arch install that I did the other day, uh, since it is a Mate version. One thing I will tell you about X2Go is if you're planning on using this with either Ubuntu Unity or with uh, any of the recent GNOME versions, forget it, it's not going to work. Uh, the only way you will get this to work is if you want to uh, if you want to install a desktop such as Mate or XFCE or some of the others that it supports, and it does have quite a few. And there's information about uh, uh, using that desktop environment with that. It also works with Windows, uh, so if you want to share a screen with Windows, you can do that as well. But uh, yeah, so it's it's pretty straightforward. It's not a particularly difficult thing to do. So let me uh, let me go back over here to this screen, and we'll get a uh, my whisker menu is gone here. So let me let me. Um, the problem is is that I need to scale this back just a little bit so I can get to the bottom of the screen. Oh, it keeps okay. So I need to turn scaling on. I had to do that before too, didn't I? So. So let's get that down. There we go. 
Let's get that up a little bit bigger so that we can actually see it. So the first thing we'll want to do is, um, is we'll want to make sure, I'm going to be using SSH to connect with. So I'm going to tunnel my connection through SSH, which then encrypts uh, the, the channel that's going between my machine and, and the, uh, the uh, server for X to go. So any traffic that transmits over that will be encrypted, which is one of the things I really like about it. Um, and so, all right, so the first thing we'll need to do here is, uh, for, for this is Fedora, so I'll need to do DNF and I'll need to do an install. Now I can do, let's do a search first. And we can do a we can do an info on it to pick up the package uh, version information and brief description about the server. So you'll need to make sure that you have the SSH uh, server running. You don't have to have anything like. Uh, you don't, you won't, with this service, you don't need to have anything like X11 forwarding or anything like that. So that's a good thing. That's a nice thing. I'm just waiting for it to, uh, I don't know, there's, there, uh, the background servers seem to be a bit loaded today. There we go. So 4.1.0.3, and that's the one we will be installing. So you would do... And that's all you need to do for XFCE. Uh, the, you'll want to look at their website for your particular desktop environment to make sure that you have, there are some configuration changes that might be needed in your particular instance. So yeah, once you've done that, now I've already done it, but it'll just tell me it's already installed. So I won't have to do anything there. So basically that's it. I, now you can, um, Let's see. The other thing you'll probably want to do if this is a new install is make sure that your is that your SSHD service is up and running. So yeah, just make sure that that's up and running. And so the next thing we'll want to do is on my client, I'm going to bring over my client window here. This was purple ice, and I want to make sure that I do a, a key gen. And, and if I haven't done this already, you only need to do it once, and there will be some files. Uh, in here called uh, IDS RSA and our ID RSA pub. Those are your private and public keys for your particular server. And then I'll want to copy the ID now this is so that I don't have to log in I don't I don't want to log in to my SSH services because that again is a vector for attack because people can just sit there and hammer away at your login in order to get access to your system so I prefer use keys to do that and uh, I have them turned on at the moment for uh, Fedora because I haven't you know I haven't set this I have set this up but I haven't configured it the rest of the way so this is on green ice and it's already done, so I'll test it. Make sure I can get in without a password, and yes, I can. Okay, so the next thing I will need to do on my client is to do a sudo x2go client and get that installed. Now, again, I, 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 let's see. Let's put the complete command there, shall we? All right, so we want to do a DNF install X2 good client. Now, if this is on Ubuntu, it would be APT, and the instructions, again, are on their website for your particular distribution. So once you've done that, you're, you're pretty much all set to go here. And so what I'm going to do I already have green ice set up here, and I can, I can edit that for you so you can see what it looks like. So you have to give it a name. 
Uh, and then, uh, you know, you give it a host and then your login and then your port. Now, I've clicked this on. That wasn't on. And so that prevents me from having to use a password if it can find one. And then here you can choose between whatever, uh, whatever desktops that you want to use. Now, GNOME and Unity are both here, but I'm telling you, they don't work. Uh, so I can, now if I want a new session, I create a new session, I can connect, I can just do that. If I want to mirror the session that is currently running and just connect to it, I can do uh, I can do that. So yeah, you can you can choose whichever one you want. So for right now, let's do this. Let's create a new session, and then I'll set my connection parameters. Am I coming across you know a modem or a <laughs> modem on ISDN, ADSL, WAN, or LAN? It's been around a while, so yeah. And then you can set whatever you your, your preferences are here for what the type of quality of the output you want. And of course, the larger you make that, uh, the slower it will be. Um, you, you have some options here. You can set it to full screen, which is kind of cool because then it looks like you're actually on that machine and it completely covers up your monitor. Uh, I'm going to select a custom one for 1980 by 1024. And I, this is on by default, but you'll probably find that you'll want to turn that off. It just gives you a little bit better performance. Now, on my installation with Fedora, uh, there's a problem with Pulse Audio, so I have turned it off. You may have better luck on your distributions, and I have also turned off client-side printing uh, because that's also a security issue. Uh, as far as shared folders, you can add and mount those. Uh, I might show those to you at, at some later point, but uh, right now, I think I'm just going to do this. And then I use the SSH port forwarding to tunnel system connections through firewalls. So no firewalls are going to be blocking me here to do this. So all I do is once I've created this note card here, uh, is go ahead and just click on it and then wait. And then it'll attend, it'll may take a few seconds to come up, uh, but there's my screen and I am on a new session. If I kind of bring this over to the side a little bit, you'll see that it is not, it is nothing like what's here. This is a brand new session. So let's close it down. And all you do is just log out. And that shuts down your session. We can cancel that. Let's uh, let's change this to local desktop. Now, in this case, it's going to connect to this desktop that's running out here. So, anything I do in the remote window, I'll, I'll give it full access. I could also do just a view access too if I wanted, and then I would only be able to you know watch what was going on, which is helpful if you you know you're trying to help somebody. But you'll notice that as I let me. Move this out of the way for a second. And we'll turn, we'll get this out of here as well. So as I make, as I do commands, they show up on the back end as well. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how it works. Um, <clears throat> and then, you, you know, you basically have full control over the system uh, in this particular mode. Uh, if I do log out here to end the session, of course, it will end the session on both machines. And that will, that will of course, terminate this. And so I want to turn this back <clears throat> to XFCE, give it its own session. So I'm not interfering with the local console version. Maybe for some reason I just want to run that headless. Yeah, and, and so I can I can do all the same things here. I can set up my oh here, we can change the background. Not a whole lot of choices there, is there? Um, for XFCE anyway. Uh, so I could I guess just do a solid color. Let's see, let's, I don't know if I have any images I could send up here. I guess I could, but yeah, I mean, I can change this pretty much any way that I want it to be changed. Um, you, you know, you, you have access to your controls here. This is the DNF Dragon Aura. Check for updates. Pretty much everything you need there. So. Uh, again, when you're ready to close out, you just log out. 
and that will shut down the session. You need to pay attention <clears throat> if you're having troubles making connections to this. Uh, you need to pay attention to the log transfer here that's taking place when it's connecting because that will show you. Now, let's, let's create an error. I don't have GNOME installed over there, so, <clears throat> so you'll notice it's trying to connect and <clears throat> unable to execute the GNOME session. So, um, yeah, and you can uh, just go back in here and it'll change it over to XFCE again. So uh, it also, for now, for one other thing, If you want to do this on Ubuntu, let's go over to Blue Eyes here. Um, <clears throat> you'll need to install an application called Task Select. On Raspberry Pis, this is already installed for you, but on Ubuntu, it is not. As, and I've already, well, I should tell it to install it. I don't know, I, I guess I must be half asleep today. All right. Now, Task Select will allow you to add, <clears throat> in a semi-safe manner, additional desktops that you might want. So there's uh, Xbuntu, there's Mate, <clears throat> and so forth, and Lubuntu, Kbuntu. So, and <clears throat> So you'll need to install those if you want additional ones. Now, my default my default Ubuntu on this particular machine is running, of course, GNOME. So what we will do is we're going to tell it to attach to Mate, Mate. And uh, same process. And it's, it's uh, asking me to enter my root pass, my root sudo. And now we have a view of Mate on. So you can use this with, um, you know, a lot of different machines. Uh, I, I was showing you one that was connected to a virtual machine. Uh, this is a native hardware box. Uh, it, it, uh, I have not had much luck with this working under Silverblue. Um, the problem with Silverblue is, is that you need to pick the desktops as you install trying to go back and install them later, according to what I've read in their forums, is that's not yet supported. And they they will, set, will tell you, just go back and reinstall it. So I suppose they'll fix that at some point, um, and may, they may have already fixed that. But yeah, so you have all the same things. Now I've got this set to a higher, uh, a higher resolution and graphics standard than I did for Fedora is why it looks a lot clearer. So, yeah, if, um, yeah, if you want to be able to link up your, your, your systems in a secure way and be able to access them rather than use protocols that are insecure, I would recommend going with X2Go. I have found it, it's, you know, it, it works fairly well. I mean, it, I don't really have any any complaints with it. Um, I just want to, let me check and see what the session preferences are here. Yeah, it's the same 16 meg, but it did look clearer. Interesting. So, yeah, that's all I had for today, and uh, uh, just a short video on X2Go. I'm probably going to do some others uh, on some of the other tools that I like to use, but uh, you know, like I said, when you run into trouble with it, there's a good troubleshooting guide that's on their website, and uh, the first couple of times that you're, you're getting this you know, up and running and, and trying to get it to work, you probably will run into some issues with it, at least I have in the past as well. But uh, with these newer versions of the OSs that have come out from both Ubuntu, I know that Pop! OS works fine with it, and also I know Fedora works okay with it. Haven't tried it on Arch yet, but I probably will. And uh, again, I uh, ho uh, hope, hope you enjoyed this, and hope to see you again real soon. Bye for now.